Hello gorgeous ones, how are we? Hopefully happy, healthy and well. Uh, it's very wintry here in Melbourne and I'm wearing one of my giant kind of oversized jumpers that I just love because it's so snugly. Now I'm gonna try, so I've got my Facebook back on the phone that works. Hello Susan. I've got Instagram on the iPad that works. And now what I'm trying to see is if I can see the comments down here Oh, I can in my Facebooky thing on the laptop because I don't have bionic vision and I love being able to interact with you guys, but I can't always see because I'm doing this far, so far away. Anyway, hope you're all happy, well, had a great day. So um, I'm now trying to see if I can watch. Oh, I can. Oh, I'll just put. There we go. So all I've done is muted it. I can now see your beautiful comments. Cheryl's on time. Annette's here, Susan's here, super good. Excellent. All right, lovelies. I'm cooking an oldie, but a goodie. Um, and it's so interesting. So we've been talking today, had a lovely, beautiful couple of coaching calls with people. Oh, get the cat out, please. Sorry, my daughter's just come in and now the naughty cat's come in. And this cat has decided that it's actually like part of me and it just attaches itself to me at any stage, day or night, eats my food, thinks that it is a human. Has anyone else got one of those sorts of cats? <laughs> hello, Lee. Hello, Pam. How are you, gorgeous ones? Hello, Veronica. Hello. So, um, cat is going, child is going all as well. So, um, so what we were talking about today, what we've spoken a fair bit about in recent times is the concept of boring food. So low carb real food is not boring, but sometimes our brain likes to pretend that it is. Because if it says to you, oh, I can't eat this way anymore, the food's too boring, then basically that gives you kind of like a license to go and choose something else that's not in the low carb range because you can't possibly do that because it's boring. However, if we were to think about boring things, so the boring word, I kind of love it. What the boring word is, hello, Karen, how are you, gorgeous? I've changed, whenever my brain says, oh, it's a bit boring, I've changed it to easy. So easy is a great word because we all want ease, right? We all want to do something that is easy. And so for me, when I go to work in the clinic, I wear scrubs now and I do it because it's easy. I don't know. I don't have to think about what I'm wearing. I just put on my pants, put on the top, easy. They're comfortable, I like them. I wear the same color every single time I go to work. I don't need 50,000 different colors. I just wear those same beautiful teal scrubs every day. And I like them and they're easy. And it can be exactly the same with your food. If we had to eat not very nice tasting food every night, that would be hard. Because, you know, every now and then I'll cook a dish that's a bit of a dud. Have we all done that? And when you do that, you go, oh. And you're kind of happy to eat it because you've cooked it and it's there and it's nutritious, but really, you don't want to eat it three nights in a row. But if I've cooked something that's delicious, then I'm very happy to eat that. And I could easily eat it three nights in a row, as I did last week with my beautiful butter chicken that you all saw me cooking. Beautiful, good, scrubs are great, they're very easy. Exactly, everything is easy. So I love the idea of having less choice. Less choice is easy. Yes, Lee, you used to love wearing scrubs, they're so easy. If I go to a restaurant, I don't have to wade through pages of food because I already know I'm pretty much, there's only gonna be a couple of things. I'll either, there's always a steak, I'll often have the steak. Sometimes there might be a fish dish that's pretty good, you know, it's not crumbed or, you know, served with some crazy sweet sauce. And again, sometimes a chicken dish. But if not, I'll just get the, I'll just get the steak. I don't care, it's easy. And yeah, I might've had steak three nights ago, but I didn't cook it. And I didn't have to do the salad and I didn't have to think about the dishes and I didn't have to actually think about it. The idea of going out to a restaurant now is not about the food. It's about the fact that I don't have to think about it. I don't have to prepare it, cook it, clean up. I just sit there and eat. Hooray, we all wanna do that. 
So this is really about reframing your thoughts around repetitive meals. And for me, I like to think that they're easy. I like to go, great, I already know that's a winner. I love it, it's easy. I don't care if I had it three nights ago or if I had it twice last week, it's easy. Good. How easy is some time of meat for dinner? Easy, always yummy and filling. Exactly. Basically, you pick a protein, you add some veggies. If the protein is lean, you can add some fat and then some flavor. So with that in mind, I'm showing you that I'm going to cook the Japanese pancake. So easy. We've had it, and the reason I'm cooking that is that basically, uh, I have no food in the fridge. Oh, sorry darlings, I just pulled my light out as I'm plugging in my, um, what do you call it? You know, my stick mixer. So, um, there we go. So, I'm cooking, I'm just gonna show you how easy mayo is. Now I know a lot of you cook your own mayo now, and that's fantastic, but it really is. It's this easy. So I'm getting an egg, just whacking that straight in. You need a tall jar, that is the key, tall jar. And I'm using macadamia oil. This is, this is actually just from Coles. It's cold pressed, it's, it's reasonably cheap, it's made in Australia, it's not, when I say reasonably cheap, it's not cheap compared to like canola oil. But again, being a whole cold pressed nut oil, lots of good um, omega-3s, not much in the horrible omega-6s. And I'm gonna put in about 250 mils. Now again, it doesn't have to be perfect. And in a perfect world, the egg wouldn't have broken, but mine did, so it doesn't actually matter. So that's about 250 mils. I'm gonna put in a squeeze of lemon. Good, not too many pips. So I prefer lemon juice, I just like the flavor, but you could put in vinegar, apple cider vinegar, any vinegar that you like, but just not balsamic syrup. Okay, balsamic syrup is got lots of sugar in it. And um, some salt. The, remember I was telling you I'm not buying pink Himalayan sea salt, uh, pink Himalayan salt anymore, well, I'm not. This one has been lasting forever. It's like, come on, I just wanna get rid of it now. So, and it's obviously, getting a bit towards the end, because look. So a fair bit of salt, and this is how confident I am in this now, because I don't have to worry that it's gonna split or I'm gonna look like a goose in front of you all by making something dud. or something like that for the good fat mayo which look if you're going to buy a mayo that's a good brand it's pretty expensive and it uses olive oil which again is okay but I just don't like the taste of it so I mean that's thick and chunky so I'll just disconnect this shove that over there for the moment that's going to go on to our Japanese pancake later now I'm just going to try and put my stove back on without disconnecting the light wonderful good haven't seemed to have killed myself. So, Japanese pancake. Basically, you do need some cabbage, I think. You could make it without it, because really, it is just making anything. So, I'm basically going to pan fry, with a bit of butter, some cabbage. So, I'll just get a hunk of butter, shove that into my lovely pan. Oops, I'll try not to put the lid in the front. Of it. Okay, so seriously, this is the quickest recipe of all time. You can, you know, just chop your own cabbage if you want. If you don't want to chop your own cabbage, again, you don't have to. You can buy cabbage already chopped, but really it's actually so easy to do it that I'm happy. It can be fine, it can be chunky, you just do whatever you like. Oops, good. So this is just a quarter of a cabbage. I'm probably going to put the whole cabbage, the whole, the whole, the whole half a cabbage. So I'll just fling that one in. Fling. Fling. 
And then here's my second cabbage, second half, second quarter. I did give this a bit of a chop um, just before I came on because the ends are a bit manky. But I'm not gonna throw it out. It's been sitting in the fridge for a week. It's perfectly fine. And it always seems to be that on a Tuesday, I don't know, mate, I, I think I do my, my shopping does often come on a Wednesday. So that's it. So you chop that up. So, just going to give this a little stir around, just to break up the cabbage a bit. And what's going to happen is this will both wilt, but also caramelise a bit and shrink down. It's take it's quite a, it's a it's a reasonable chunk of cabbage, but it'll shrink down to about nothing. And I'm even feeling like a legend because I remembered the lid. So that's easy. Now, I was watching this on a, some sort of TikTok thing the other day. <laughs> I don't know who watches TikTok. Apparently, I do. Um, and they talked about chopping your cabbage, your capsicum this way. So I'm going to give it. A, I'm going to give it a go and see what happens. So you just get, you know, you chop down those little things. I don't know if it's going to work. It seemed to on the thingy, and then. that's helpful I don't know I think I'm probably probably pretty happy with my normal way anyway again doesn't matter just big chunks do whatever you like if you want to do small chunks you can the key is really make sure you've got a nice sharp knife for about 10 years I chopped with a blunt knife it's awful and a sharp knife makes things especially if you're chunky ch chopping makes it so quick get rid of that I don't like the white piffy stuff in a capsicum makes it bit bitter um, so basically the veggies in this are obviously the cabbage and the capsicum if whatever you have in the fridge you can put though if I had mushrooms I would fling some of those in if I had some beans I'd put some of those in just any old veggies um, that are on the green list we, I mean I tend not to eat but I don't eat potatoes um, so you know I wouldn't put that in um, I wouldn't, I only eat a small amounts of carrot from time to time that are in a coleslaw. I'll probably, and occasionally I'll put a carrot in a spag bowl. Out of the underground veggies, carrot is reasonably low, but what I wouldn't do is I wouldn't have carrot soup, for example. So the, the devil is often in the dose. So again, a little bit here and there is okay, but for most root veggies, we tend to eat a lot of them. You know, if you think, pile of mashed potato, pile of um, sweet potato. A tiny bit of sweet potato is not a big deal. A lot is a big deal. So, um, good. Very stressed with painful eyes, Sue. That's no good. I missed that bit of it. I hope you're okay. Um, all right, let's get this going. I've put it up high. It's just heating up. Actually, going to turn it on to frying. Wow! Apparently, there's a frying setting on here. Who knew? I'll turn that down a bit then. Frying. Anyway, I'm just waiting for that to heat up. So that'll heat up, and then in the meantime, for the pancake a bit, you just put some eggs in. Now, you don't want it to. It's because it's a pancake. It doesn't need to be big and thick like a um, like a quiche or a frittata. So I'm not adding anything other than the eggs. So I'm just gonna bang all these in. And again, whatever number you've got. I've got 11 because I used one in the mayonnaise. Um, and what'll happen is that this will work out to be quite a flat pancake. And just not sure why it's taking a bit longer to heat up. Normally it's much quicker. Um, so I'm not adding cream or cheese or anything like that, is what I, which is what I'd normally do with this. And then, whatever we don't eat tonight, well then you can cut it, this is in a giant square pan, you can do it in a round pan obviously. I'll just cut it into slices and it can be uh, for breakfast or lunch, because remember, 
you can have really whatever food you like at whatever time of day you like. There's no definite um, meal times required for various foods. So following the formula that we use, a pick a protein, eggs are a protein. Okay, seven grams of protein per egg. They're not as protein dense. Well, they're probably not as protein dense as meat because the number of eggs needed to get the same amount of protein is a lot more. So I would just, just chuck in that box over there. I would normally have say 150 to 200 grams of meat and that's probably about 50 grams of protein. Whereas I'm unlikely to eat six eggs. So just being mindful of that. Um, normally I might put some bacon or some ham or even some mince in with this. But I don't have any. I could have put some tuna in it, but I just, we had salmon patties the other night and I just don't feel like it. So I'm not. All right, let me see how this is going. Good. butter in here so it's obviously melted away which is good it's just taking a little bit of time to heat up so i'll just fling these capsicum in while that's doing and then we'll sit, sit back and have a chat wait for that to come down put that in that'll take about a minute and then you're done now i was thinking of adding in some sun-dried tomatoes but i've changed my mind i just like a little bit of color you know and really they can go for something else oh and I'm gonna put some of this seasoning in here. So this is the new mingle, it's called, whoops, we forgot the bagel. It's a bit of a take on every, um, you know, everything but the bagel. Again, all it's got in it is sesame seeds, so no good if you have sesame seed allergy, but it's black and white sesame seeds, some garlic, some onion, and a bit of salt. I figure that goes nicely in a pancake, but I'll wait till this is cooked, is cooked before we go any further. There we go. <laughs> I hadn't put it up high enough. All right, so lovely. So we've talked before about the idea that you can change your mind management around um, boring food. And whenever your brain says that food's boring, you can change it to that's easy. If your brain says, I can't eat that meal again, I had it as last night, I kind of go, yeah, but that's easy. I also swap the word easy if I'm ever tempted to call myself lazy. So people will use the word lazy all the time. They go, I'm so lazy, I just do blah, blah. No, you're not lazy. I don't know anybody. I honestly don't know anybody who is lazy. The majority of people I know and the majority of our members are beautiful, busy, hardworking, time poor people. Taking shortcuts is not lazy, it's easy. And as humans, we are always looking for ease. And who doesn't want an easy life? I mean, why would you go, if someone said to you, you can have an easy life or you can have a hard life, what are you gonna choose? Oh yeah, I'll have the hard life, thanks. No, pick the easy one. So trying to find shortcuts. Ah, oh, Helen says that she loves having her evening meal again. Absolutely. Trying to find shortcuts to make your life easy is smart. So in fact, Whenever you're tempted to call yourself lazy, mm -mm, you're not lazy. You're looking for ease, which makes you smart. So therefore you are the smart person. And that's what I like. So what I'd love is anybody, if any of you would like to share some of your tips while we're chatting, while I'm waiting for my very slow thing to heat up. I don't know what it's doing. Heating, it says it's heating. Something, anyway, heat. Um, Share a few tips. What are, what are your other things that you do that are easy? Okay, Karen's having leftovers for dinner tonight. How easy? I know, it's so good. Because if you're looking for ease, having leftover means you don't have to deal with a pot. You don't have to deal with thinking about food. Um, what other ones? Frittata here. Gillian's having frittata with fresh eggs, tomatoes, tomato relish. Fantastic. So... A couple of other things to have a think about when your brain is going, oh, you know, I don't want to do this, it's boring, or I can't keep eating the same food. Um, or what about this? What's in the pan, Tanya? I'm cooking cabbage. Uh, 
I'm, I don't know why my pan is taking a little longer than normal, but I'm frying up some cabbage with um, some capsicum and I'm making a Japanese pancake. It's, it's all ready to go. It's just seemingly a bit slow, which is good, but that's okay. I'm just going with it because that's what we do. Just making sure it's not very hot for some reason. Anyway, this is what happens on live television, of course. I'm dealing with things that are not always helpful. The light's on, so I know it's all working. Everyone's home. Bing says it's on. I'm just waiting for it to heat up. If it doesn't heat up, I'll just cook it on the stove over there where I actually normally do my cooking and I'll show you the answer. It's no big deal. Yes, Helen likes to cook a little extra for dinner and then you've got food for the next day. Now here's something that is quite people are quite resistant to. Oh, Millie always has bacon and eggs on hand, breakfast anytime, I love that. So do any of you meal plan or meal prep? And I suspect the answer is there's always like, it's half half. Some people are meal preppers and some people aren't. And I'm not actually a meal prepper, but that's because I don't care if I eat the same thing three nights in a row. I'm a big food cooker. If I'm gonna stand here cooking, then I'm gonna cook enough for at least two, potentially three nights. If you can do that, then that's, that's excellent and that's like your meals. If you don't wanna do that, then you've got the option of meal prepping, perhaps on the weekend or on a, on a day when you're not actually maybe at paid employment or whatever, and then you can plan your week ahead. Ah, Ray is a planner and a prepper. No one is surprised by this, absolutely. And you'll see that there are some people who do this when they're Saturday morning and they get everything ready for the week ahead, wash their vegetables, they're all ready, so that when they come home, that all they have to do is pick, 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 or they can get their kids to grab, 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 and it makes it really easy. So that's a system that does work for some people. Marilyn says she's a planner too. And Susan is probably a bit more like me, not a prepper or a planner, but always has the right food available. And Jody isn't really, Jody's a bit more, more like me. So I think they're, they're your two people. Your people that go, yeah, you know what, I'm happy to wing it, but you can only wing it if you've got the food available. And then there's the preppers who have all the food available. Each of those things is perfectly fine, okay? Because you're the boss of you, you can do whatever you like. But what we do know is that you need to be able to um, work with the way your brain works. So if you're a prepper and you think, no, no, I'm gonna wing it this week, it, it probably won't work for you because you'll get a bit freaked out because you like to be organized and you like to know what, what's happening. And if you're like me, I kind of go, oh God, I can't think that far ahead. I can only think at, you know, one day ahead. Um, so yes, and when Karen's motivated, she gets preps and a whole lot of meals. Otherwise she just has meat and eggs. Yep. <laughs> and Liz wants to be prepped and planned. Absolutely. So I'm not sure what is happening, my loves, with my pot. But it's really, it's not, it's not heating up. It says it's on, but it's not. Hmm. I'll try one more thing, but I suspect there's something. <laughs> I don't know why I'm touching it. It's an induction cooktop. It's not going to be hot, but it doesn't seem to be working. So what I'm going to do is, so basically I just pour these eggs in. I, I fling in some mingle seasoning, pour these in, put the lid on. It doesn't have to be completely cooked through because it'll cook as it goes. So the thing with a Japanese pancake is you don't want it to be too dry. And I don't want it to rise that much because I like it to be more pancakey. And then, because I've made my amazing mayonnaise, I'm gonna do what they, what they do in, in restaurants, is drizzle it like this, like this, like this, with this and this stuff. So this is the Mingle Barbecue sauce. Um, it's way better, way better than um, other sauce. Oh, I hope it hasn't died on me. Yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll have a look at it and see. If it has, I'll just have to come up with something else. Um, life has a funny way of working out. Um, but this, this barbecue, all of the mingle sauces, look, they're not, I don't eat a lot of sauce. And in, in terms of real food, they're probably, you know, they, they have got some processing in them. 
but comparatively to saying Master, Master Foods barbecue sauce or standard tomato sauce, which have truckloads of sugar, these don't have any. They're flavored with monk fruit um, and erythritol. So much better option. Um, and I'll make a nice little picture. I'm sorry, I can't, I'm not gonna be able to show you this. It's just not doing its thing. So have a lovely, lovely evening, darlings. And remember, look for ease. You're not lazy, you're smart. It's not boring, it's easy. That's it. Have a lovely evening, bye darlings.